Um, if you need to get in contact with me, here's my info. If you want to take a screenshot or a picture with your phone, I'm always available to you. I'm not, like I said, in sales. I'm an advisor. I'm a free resource to organizations. So hopefully now that all makes more sense as I was going through this. And, and thank you for your help there. And, and just going a little bit further there on Candoris, it's a unique company. You know, seven years as a client. By year four, I started to realize there's something different here. And I just flat out asked them. I said, is this a missional company? And it is. You know, these, what you see on the screen here, hopefully, <laughs> these are the tenants of the organization. And not many organizations have as their main tenants. Be humble, honor family, do the right thing always, lead by serving, and innovate to solve problems. Um, in fact, they're part of the 1% uh, program you may have heard of from Salesforce, where they give back 1% of everything, profits and our time. Our time, we volunteer uh, for organizations that we, you know, are near and dear to our heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the main thing that we focus on is being able to help children in need that need oh. medicine, education, and uh, water. So we help with a lot of digging lots of wells around the world. And in addition to elevating security, you know, Candorus um, exists to be your trusted advisor with all things in the modern infrastructure stack, as well as supercharging your productivity. And then, of course, data solution centers. That has been our bread and butter since the very beginning, as well as software engineering and Salesforce consulting. Um, in the Salesforce consulting world, we basically have two houses, two sides to the house. Uh, we are one of the top two or three organizations in the country for Salesforce nonprofit consulting. We think it's a really big one. Um, who we can help that we have been helping for years and years. Um, so again, two sides of the house, the data warehouse side, and then the Salesforce and software engineering side. And of course, managed services. A lot of organizations, they want to not handle these things themselves. And they just, they just uh, work with us and we take care of their firewalls, their server farms, their endpoint protection, you name it, we can do it for them. So just a little bit about Candorce. Um, in the chat window, before uh, some of you came on, I put a link to our security offerings glossy. Just as a point of reference, when I was a CIO, I greatly appreciated when someone came in my office, they didn't waste my time trying to tell me verbally a bunch of things that I'll forget the second you walk out because 12 other things are going to happen. Um, but I had a one-page glossy, almost like a menu. And I might just leave it on my desk or in a drawer, and then let's say the CFO comes down the, all, the hall two months from now and says, oh, yeah, we got dinged on an audit, and we need to make sure multi-factor authentication is on for all of our C-level suite. And I could just go down and say, yep, they do multi-factor authentication. I like Candorus. I give my rep a call, and I now know a good place to go to get those kind of things. This is a little hard to read, and that's why I put the link in the chat window that'll take you right to the actual PDF that you can download, print out, if you're so inclined, and hold on to. You can see that we um, partner with some of the, the best companies out there. Um, and, and again, Dell is our big partner. Uh, and with Dell comes, of course, VMware. Dell owns VMware, uh, who also owns RSA and everything else downstream on their train. So if we were all in person, and I've done many presentations at conferences, and you come in, and we have a nice little table out there with some swag for you uh, of things to be able to pick up, uh, as a little twist today, um, if you are interested, you can click on the other link that is in the um, chat window, and we would be happy to, our marketing team will just send you a um, nice little um, it's, it's, it's a webcam window screen protector. Um, so you can just slide over when you don't want people looking right back at you. Works great on an iPad as well. So no cost there, of course. We're not going to pound you with anything. Um, just a nice little uh, giveaway for attending this virtual conference. Okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes here. Um, of fortifying our human firewall. And Kevin, actually, our keynote speaker, who I happen to know, um, touched on um, this quite a bit, is that 
you know, the human element, that is where over 90% of all attacks begin. And the bad guys know that. You know, we have technology in place, we have systems in place, we have all kinds of gates and parameters in place. But they're trying to get to the humans because the humans tend to be the weakest link. They, they click on something and it opens up the keys to the kingdom. You can see the statistics on the screen. You've seen them coming across your aggregates, the news, the radio um, for the last six months. You know, everything is just exploded. Um, this one right here, this is from today, this morning. You know, global ransomware attacks increased by 715% as cyber criminals capitalize on the pandemic opportunity. You know, we are going through the world's largest business continuity plan ever in human history. There's never been a time where people have been so displaced from their work environment and having to be pushed out into um, their their homes using home Wi-Fi that may not be secure. Having uh, little people in their home <laughs> might be uh, looking over their shoulder or working on their computers when and just have all kinds of uh, breach exposure access points. The bottom one here is very interesting, came out two weeks ago, that CrowdStrike is seeing that their data is showing that in the first half of 2020, so the first six months of 2020, they have more breaches than we had last year in 2019 for the entire year. And if you were in cybersecurity in 2019, you know 2019 was like off the charts. Um, it, it was just a year that we couldn't wait for that one to end, and then we got hit with 2020. So cute little uh, video, 30 second video here for you. I'm gonna turn the volume down and speak over it. I think we all have probably seen Tony Stark here in his uh, Iron Man. I'm not sure which one it was. But if I turn the volume down, picture this, this is your world, your environment, if you run an organization uh, before March. You could kind of get your uh, your arms around it, and then boom, COVID hit. We all got displaced. Quickly had to stand up devices, give people hotspots, get them on remote access, do all kinds of VDI, and we just didn't know where the parameter ended. Um, and that look, that stare on his face right there, kind of tells it all of you know the conversations I've had with CIOs and tech directors over the last six months of how in the world do we protect it. Business continuity came first. We had to keep the business running. But now the panic that people have been in since around August 1st is great. How do we now go back and seal up all the holes of what we created so we could actually uh, stay in business and keep continuity? We don't need to see Tony again. So getting back to then the protecting the human firewall, th there's this really amazing anomaly. You know, we spend a fortune on securing our environment and we need to, we need firewalls and switches and DLPs and EDRs and everything else under the sun. I had to do that for 20 years. However, 94% of all breaches is, you know, according to Verizon's DBR report last year, they're coming from a human basically clicking on an attack email, yet we spend such a fraction, a small fraction on protecting that vector. Um, and I think that's really changing in the last 120 days. Um, and I have some statistics to show that in just a second. So with fortifying your human firewall, if we focus over on the cartoon on the left, if you've been around for a while, you've seen this cartoon, it's famous, it's been around probably 20 years. Um, and if you can't read it, what it says is, you know, in this corner, we have firewalls and encryption and antivirus software, et cetera. And in this corner, we have Dave. And he has a sign on his shirt that says human error. Uh, you know, usually it's, they call it Dave from accounting. We'll click on anything. Um, and it can be very true. You know, technology is not the full solution. It is people processing technology. And the people piece uh, is exponentially um, a bigger way to protect the organization. So if we move over to the right-hand side, a security awareness training program can turn your employees, of course, from that weakest link, where some of your users will just click on anything, um, 
to your human firewall. Um, and we're going to talk about that on the next couple of slides here. So this came right from No Before, and we at Candoris, we represent both No Before and Proofpoint Security Awareness Training, which I'll touch on. Um, very simple slide. It's just some circles with some colors in it, but it was created by Roger Grimes. If you know Roger, he's uh, very famous in cybersecurity for the last 35 years, written over 12 books, 1,000 articles, worked for Microsoft, McAfee, et cetera. And he and I actually co-presented a webinar last week. Uh, in full disclosure, he was 90% of the talent and I was less than 10% of the talent on that presentation. But he has all the data behind this that our organizations get hit by a lot of things. And we do not have a magic wand with all the money in the world coming out the other end. To prioritize, the majority of your threats can be thwarted by a good social engineering program. The second largest thing is you need to be fanatical about making sure you have a really good patch management um, process in place and a solution in place, how you handle that. And if you do those two things, you are over 90%, close to 95% of winning the battle. Sure, we need all kinds of other things to protect. That does not suggest we do not have a firewall or EDR or MFA or a SIM or a SOC as a service, but you can win the majority of the battle, especially if you are on limited funds um, by tackling these two things. And the great news is this big red one here doesn't cost much at all. So as I mentioned, here at Candorus, we represent both Know Before and Proofpoint. You may know Proofpoint as Wombat um, when it comes to security awareness training. Proofpoint, of course, is, is one of the best in breed when it comes to protecting your email from malware. Highly recommend it in that regard. Um, but they bought Wombat a year ago, who used to be number two in the space, to move themselves up very quickly. Um, know before, they're the kings of the industry and have been for a long time. To give you an idea, this is all know before does. Where Proofpoint and other companies down here, they do lots of other things, so they're not as focused on being the absolute best. In addition, know before has over 34,000 clients, um, and just everyone knows know before is you know, the top, top upper echelon when it comes to security awareness training, where Proofpoint only has 4,700 clients. It's a good product. I'm not speaking poorly about Proofpoint, and if it's something that you're interested in, we can certainly do a demo for you. We, could, we would be happy to sell it to you, um, and you, keep, you can't go wrong. If I'm talking to you like you're my brother or my best friend, I'm saying go with no before. Also, last, uh, now it's two weeks ago, Forrester Wave just came out. And as you can see, No Before is the clear winner out here. Proof points a couple, uh, a second wave back. Um, both, though, are highly respected. So j let's just talk for real briefly here. A lot of words on the screen, and I want to get away from all the words. But what security awareness is not, sometimes folks are a little confused. What it is not is, it's not hurting people into a conference room and giving them a training once a year and having them all sign a piece of paper. That's not effective. They're, half of them are going to be like the guy in the middle with his head down. They're not going to be paying attention. Um, they're going to be working on their laptops. A lot of, not a lot's going to sink in. And even though they check the box, that really does not check the auditor box um, so much. They, what auditors want to see is they want to see a systematic approach and implementation, you know, monthly fish, blind fishing with quarterly training um, and training uh, collateral going out to make sure your people, it's always top of mind. What security awareness training is, though, um, it's systematic, continuous, asynchronous, engaging, research-based, uh, teachable moments, which I'm about to show you, timely information. When COVID hit, within two days, both companies here had COVID modules already built um, to be able to send out to your employees to help train them. Um, they even have modules for coming back to the workplace. They even have modules for how to properly wear a mask. 
So it's a really deep bench of uh, uh, resources that are there. Everything's easily tracked with reporting. It definitely checks the auditor box. Um, and again, it is proven to work with um, very a, a deep uh, amount of data to back that up. And then they come with um, what they call training collateral, which I'm going to show you, such as infographics, flyers, posters, videos, even um, No Before has this really cool Netflix-like series that won at the Cannes Film Festival, and I'm going to show you that as well. So from this point forward, I'm going to focus on No Before because that is the product we lead with the most. Um, again, if you ever want to talk about proof point security awareness training, just ping me and I'm more than happy to do that for you. So no before here, they're in on the, if we focus on the left hand side, they are in every sector. Um, they are, again, by far the gorilla in the room. Everybody knows them as the king. And if you look at that number where it says 34,000 customers, that was 30,000 customers on June 1st. So between June 1st and September 1st, they increased by 4,000 customers. That's a 13% company increase. Now, the company's been increasing by over 25% year over year anyway. It's a very rapidly increasing company because they're so committed to growth. Um, but with the statistics we saw at the top of all the ransomware and the phishing, so many companies jumped on board and decided we need to get a formal security awareness training program in place. And a 13% growth in one quarter is just amazing. Uh, they're the world's largest when it comes organization when it comes to security awareness training and simulated phishing. Based out of Tampa, Florida, um, I'm always jealous when I'm speaking to them because they always have beautiful weather and I'm up here outside of Philadelphia where it's often gray <laughs> and hot and humid. Um, been around for 10 years. They came from all their senior leadership that formed the company came from other major um, antivirus and malware companies, so they've had a long experience in that field. Um, and then they have won so many awards um, over the years and especially recently. So we touched on this a bit. You know, over 91% of all breaches start with spear phishing, a human clicking on something. In fact, there's a statistic that 99% of all breaches or attacks start with some form of humor, human interaction. And the goal is to be able to train up our employees to actually be more cautious, to be more thoughtful, to think before they click or make a phone call before they click to the person who, quote unquote, sent it to them. And it really wasn't them indeed. Um, CEO fraud, sometimes they call that BEC compromise, but I don't know about your organization. My organizations would get this all the time. It's the one liner from the CEO or the CFO or the principal that says, hey, are you available? And that's all it says. And it's leaning upon the employee's willingness to want to please their boss. But in fact, it's a spoofed email and they make it look very legit. So of course the employee replies back, yes, what do you need? Hey, stuck in a meeting, can't talk. I need you to send me um, $200 worth of I, uh, Amazon gift cards or iTunes gift cards. I'll make sure petty, you get it reimbursed petty cash on Monday morning. I'm out of pocket. Thanks. And then they reply back and then they make the transition. Um, this also includes, um, and the number last year was $26 billion. So you don't get there just for Amazon and, and iTunes gift cards. That also includes wire transfers. I can tell you from my last organization, it was less than two years ago, um, they had a very well-crafted spoofed email from our CEO asking our AP clerk to start a transaction for $20 million. She said, well, it looks like it's from Dr. So-and-so-and-so. We should do that. And then she then pinged the next person to continue this process. Fortunately, of course, we had separation of duties in place. It didn't smell right. That person then pinged back the CEO and they realized, okay, this is a CEO fraud and we nipped it in the butt. Um, though the people on the other line, they will keep communicating with you very nicely. Hi, Jane, just wanted to get the status report on how soon we should be able to expect the next round of payments. Um, so things to watch out for. And then this last one right here, 
75% of all companies that are infected with ransomware, they were running up-to-date endpoint protection. And, and I can tell you, I've only been with Candoras for nine months. Um, I have been on more phone calls with CIOs who are almost in tears because they realize it's kind of the end of their job <laughs> or they're, they're in big trouble. They, they, I had everything in place and they still got ransomware because their end users are clicking on things. So a modern way to look at this, for, you know, if you've been around a while, we all know the stack. You protect the devices, the network, and the infrastructure. But really, over the last six, seven years, we have to add people to that because that has been the new game in town, um, I guess, for the last decade of exploiting folks. You know, malware, of course, malware, antivirus, it goes back for my entire career of 30 years. But it has just become you know, like on steroids over the last 10 years. It's a money game and there is money to be had these days in this area. So here's how Know Before makes it really simple and easy to understand um, and to train your folks. You know, it's just a simple cycle. You train your people and they provide you the resources to do it. They're very easy to digest, they're not long, they don't put them to sleep. Um, it's a lot of thought went into it with instructional trainers and psychologists. And you fish your people. You don't tell them that it's coming. You tell them, hey, we're going to fish you once a month. So they know it's always top of mind. But then you, you blind fish them. You get those results. You analyze those results. And what's recommended is you actually share with your employees. You're open. You're honest. And you say, you know, look, we're all in this together. We need to protect our organization, our data, and ultimately our jobs and our families. Um, and, and this time we, you know, we only had about three people to click on this. Of course, those three people know who know know who they are. They don't need to be openly shamed, but they end up then getting better. And you just continue the cycle. It's very much like if you wanted to go out. You had a softball game this weekend, and you wanted to go to the batting cages tonight. You want to go hit a thousand balls. Well, that would be like training once a year. Or you might say. Yeah, I'm going to go to the training, the batting cage once a week for the golf range and drive some balls once a week. And now I have steady improvement and constant growth and my game's going to be better. Great news is it's unlimited usage. So if you want to fish your employees every day of the year, you can. There, there is no increased cost for that. Um, they have the world's largest library of customized fish emails that are already pre-built. I'm going to show you in a moment, easily searchable. If you would like to customize them to make it either harder or easier for your employees or more to what you're seeing in your environment, um, you certainly can. And I'll show you that as well. They have over 60 detailed reports, really great to show progress, tracking, and then of course if you have to make like a board presentation or a presentation to senior leadership, um, they come in really handy. Um, the ransomware guarantee, full disclosure, I wish they didn't put that on there. That's $1,000 if you follow all of their methodology. Um, you know, I, I wish that wasn't there. It's only $1,000. It's not like, hey, there's a million dollar package and it's going to get you out if something went wrong. Um, but back to the positive, with the phishing campaigns, you can also have simulated phishing with attachments. You can customize the attachments. Maybe you're getting hit with the same kind of things of uh, fake invoices or fake um, deliveries from UPS or DHL or FedEx. You can certainly um, work with those. And then smart groups is a thing that allows you to kind of lean upon um, some automation to really cut down on the lift on your end. So this is a Forrester report that was done. And these are, this is an aggregate of data for all sectors. If you remember in the very beginning, I showed you that pie chart for all sectors. Um, some sectors do better than others. But in the beginning, they recommend that you blind fish your employees. You send a fish campaign out. You do not tell them we've engaged with the company and we're going to start doing phishing campaigns. Um, of course, you have senior level buy-in, but you get a baseline. And in general, they fail miserably. They fail between 30 and 40% of the time. They're going to click on things. Um, they're not going to have the same level of defensive measures in place. However, then you do your initial training with them. It's all digital. You send it out. It's asynchronous. They do it on their own timeline. 
You give them a cutoff two weeks, three weeks. It's all tracked. You give them some training collateral. There are videos. And within three months, the statistic comes down to about 14% of the time they're still failing. Now, in my experience, that number is even lower. And then, of course, based upon the Forrester report, again, this is collecting all of the collateral from all of the industries from the 34,000 organizations. So that's why the numbers might be higher. But it gets you down below 5%. My clients are reporting about 2 to 4 to 5% that people really learn after a little bit of training. And then of course the benefits we can see here on the left hand side. That leads to less, you know, reduced malware infections, reduced data loss, reduced product, um, potential cyber theft, increased user productivity. And this is the big one. I can tell you that from Candoris because we do the same thing with our employees. The users have security top of mind. You know, they are thinking about things. I can't tell you how many times they'll say, you know, Mark, I would have clicked on that before we uh, started our security training awareness way back. Um, but now I thought about it. I hovered over the links. It just didn't seem right. I picked up the phone and I called the HR department and they said, oh, yeah, we didn't send that. That's just spoof. Saving a whole lot of issues up here with malware, data loss, and lost capital. One of the things that the CEO of Know Before is pretty fanatical about is he wants everything to be clean, crisp, like Google-like, he'll say. Easy to find in two clicks. Um, you know, a 10-year-old could figure out how the flows go. And the reporting is reflective of that. It, you get the gist here of these are phishing campaigns. You can see how many people have gotten better on the different um, things that they may have clicked on, whether they clicked on the, the the simulated fish you sent, um, did they actually reply to it? Did they open an attachment? And you can see on from there. Also lets you um, see against your industry. So let's just say you've done some training and you're down to a 7.9%. That's your number, that's great. But the industry is up here. That's always a good metric to show what you're trying to show. Hey, we did our due diligence and our due care um, to senior leadership or to the board. So getting to the phishing email templates, um, you can see over here it says 32,000. These slides are dated by about six weeks, uh, uh, two months, um, and they're now close to 5,000 templates. They constantly are creating new templates, especially for whatever's going on in the world. They are making templates right now um, very heavily in regards to the campaign in regards to mail-in ballots. So anything that's really happening out there in the world, they are making templates um, and they look real. You do not have to search through you know, thousands. You can, they're broken down by groups. So let's just say you have to work on a little HIPAA training with your folks. There you go, you can go to that group. But better yet, and you can't see it from this slide, there's a little search bar up here and you can just search for keywords. So if you're having a lot of CEO fraud, just type in CEO, boom, up come all the CEO ones. And then you can see based upon difficulty with the stars, you can see when it was made. Um, and the great thing is in this column, you can't see there's a little eyeball. And if you click on it, it actually opens the email, lets you see what the end user would receive. And then it allows you as the person deciding what to send to click on this toggle red flags button. If we have enough time, I want to show this to you. It shows you then, it'll put red flags in the email with underlines and shows these are all the things your employees should have caught, whether it was a misspelling, whether it was aggressive wording, whether it was from the Prince of Zaire, um, anything like that. And then when they click on it, um, and that's, I'll be on the next screen, it actually then pops up and tells them, see, this is why, you know, you should have noticed this piece. And you can send a test email to yourself. So if you want to see what it looks like before it comes in, that's great. Um, we usually uh, encourage our employee, our firms to send a test to yourselves and then send them to your support desk. Tell them, don't tell anybody, but they're going to get flooded that day or that week that you start sending out those um, simulated fishes. And then they can at least say, yes, that was real. That was legit. That was not. 
So this part's really handy. You know, people are going to fall for some of your simulated fish emails. And that's a teachable moment. Um, and they have these, I, I forget how many it is, it's, it's 40 or 50 different screens that you can choose to come up after they click on a simulated fish. They tend to make it more um, uplifting and trainable or that teachable moment of like, okay, you clicked on a fish or oops, you've been fished. However, it's okay. This was sent by your organization um, and some reminders. I prefer the one here on the right where it actually shows you those little red flags of, okay, you fell for a fish, but these are the things you should have noticed. If you remember back to your training that your organization did, if they hover over those little red lines and flags, it will tell them even in greater detail, you know, you, this, this is a link, but it doesn't really, um, it doesn't pass the sniff test or, hey, this didn't come from the appropriate domain, that kind of thing. And the ones I really like, they have the little, nice little 30 second videos that show them of like, oops, you've been fished. However, remember, bing, 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 and it goes through. And in, within 30 seconds, it's it been ingrained in their head of like, oh yeah, okay. And hopefully then the next time they've learned. So dealing with training collateral or training content, what that means is they have the largest library of resources that you can send to your employees at whatever cadence you prefer, often about once a month or once a quarter, to help them remember and learn um, about what to what to click on, what not to click on, and, and remember some trainings. Let me go ahead two slides for a second, and I'll come back to this one. So this would be more of a traditional one that we've seen over the years where you send this out and people remember, oh, yeah, okay, I'm not supposed to click on that, or this doesn't seem appropriate. Um, I, I should really be checking that from email. Is the CEO really sending me an email? If, you know, I just got to the company five minutes ago and I'm 12 layers down on the depth chart, um, here's a great one that talks about hovering over links. So when you receive things, whether it's in social media or in email, you hover over the links and it can help you distinguish the like, oh yeah, this isn't from our organization or a vendor. It's going off to some place that just doesn't seem safe. So to go back to slides, um, Nova Before is very proud of their, you know, they have cartoon series, they have different video series, um, they've purchased many companies that create these kind of resources. Um, this inside man is the one I wanted to draw attention to for just a second. So this is like a Netflix series. It's 12 to 15 minutes, highly engaging. You have really no idea that you're learning about security awareness training it's very uh it's a, kind of an espionage story where this gentleman right here had some kind of gambling debt in college and someone is leveraging him in his new organization um, to be able to exfiltrate data this guy over here is the cio for the company and it's really really interesting how they lay it out where it's a real soft subtle training where you're not really focusing on the fact that you're being trained. And what we hear is employees, because there are two seasons, I think it's a total of 20 episodes, they go home and they binge watch it over a weekend. So your employees are actually training themselves up on their own time over the weekend, and they're actually enjoying what they're watching. And at the very end of each episode, when the credits roll, right before there, they have about 15 seconds of a voiceover of, you know, in this episode, John did this and he should have looked out for that. Or we noticed that Sally was shoulder surfing over um, Tim and we always want to make sure um, to, that our screens are not showing um, sensitive data, et cetera. So, very interesting. And again, it won, uh, I think it was last year or the year before at the Con Film Festival. Okay, so keeping my eye on the clock, I need to pick it up just a little bit. But very deep reporting in know before. Um, you can track your employees. They even have this great thing called the virtual risk officer that will let you really dive into um, how your employees are doing. If you have some employees that maybe they're just not paying attention to the mandate to do this kind of training. You can identify who they are, work with their managers, work with HR. Um, you could also have folks that are called VAPs, very attacked people. 
um, usually the C, C level folks, they're just getting inundated. When I was a CIO, I would get 50 to 75 emails a day um, that were just junk. And you always had to be on, you know, the lookout. And then just to pull it all together again, um, with no before, they have that unlimited access to over 3,000 phishing templates. It's now more like 5,000. You can, there's no additional cost for using them as much as you want. They also have the world's largest library of training content um, for, you know, a collateral to help train your employees. You can customize all the fish templates. Um, there's a fish alert button that we're going to try to squeeze in here in the last couple minutes. It's a real game changer. They have a thing called ASAP. So if you want to set this up, you can answer a couple questions in about five minutes. They will spit out for you a game plan, and you could really have this thing up and running in an afternoon. It's not a heavy lift to implement, and it gives you a breakdown on all step recommended steps with um, pre-formulated emails that you can pick and choose how how you would want to send them, such as emails that you may be sending to um, to get senior level uh, buy-in, or emails that you would send out to the all employees on the first engagement, etc. Um, so you do not have to recreate the wheel. Of course, like anything these days, it ties into Active Directory. You can use LDAP, or you can just go old school and use a CSV file if you're so inclined. And again, the reporting is very advanced. So with the limited time I have left here, I really want to show this one to you because it's a total game changer. Um, and we, I believe we can squeeze it all in. We can. So with fish, with, with, with security awareness training from no before, you get everything that we just talked about. And that's what people usually think about from know before, and they're very happy with that. However, the know before sells one extra product. It's a little add-on. It, it, it's very inexpensive, and it's called FISH ER. They put FISH in front of everything. ER stands for, like, emergency room. And then part of FISH ER comes free, FISH RIP. RIP stands for rest in peace or rip it out of your environment. And, of course, everything has to have fish in front of it. So to speed this up, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Here's what you would get if you bought no before, the base package with all the training modules and et cetera. It comes with this little button that will go into any mail system that you have. It even works with Lotus Notes, believe it or not. It's called the fish alert button. This empowers your employees that if they're not sure about an email, they can just chicken out, and that's what know before says. When is out, chicken out. And they can just click on it, and then it will automatically be routed. Usually people have it routed to their help desk or their service desk. It's a manual process from there. Um, and in my organization, you know, I had 4,500 users, and I would often, as I'm commuting into work, get a text or a phone call from my network administrator saying, Yep, we got a whole bunch of malware again. I would say, how many? It looks like about 150. Okay, do the usual. Do the usual meant, and I, I can't tell you how many CEOs, CIOs I talk to that say, yeah, we do the usual too. You get one of those emails. You take a screenshot of what the email looked like. You draw some arrows on there. You send that out to everybody who was infected with those 100, affected with those 150 emails. Tell them, you received this email this morning or within the last two few days. Please do not click on it. If you did, contact the help desk and change your password immediately. At that point, you look like the guy in the bottom left with the three phones. Your help desk is blown up for hours and hours, um, and you've lost so much human collateral. Where with that fishy R, that very low-cost add-on, if you have an employee that clicks on that little fish alert button, Maybe the employee's sharp because they've paid attention in training, or maybe they're just a nervous Nelly and they chickened out. That email then will scream through the next five icons here in less than five minutes based upon no before's um, statistics. It goes through their machine learning, um, which is based upon their data lake of over 34,000 clients and that knowledge that's, that has been gained from there of known goods and known bads. It'll run through uh, predefined rules, such as YAR rules, most commonly known as YAR rules, but there are others. If you're so inclined to write your own YAR rules, you can, and add it to this mix. 
it runs it through tags such as going up to virus total which is uh, owned by Google and it com it pulls together over 80 different antivirus and malware companies their data lakes um, and it will come back tagged with things like uh, virus total bad meaning virus total says it's bad etc you can also put in your own tags maybe there is something that comes through and you know it's good it's coming through bad for some reason but you know it's good you can put a tag on there it says known good and then that cuts down on the time where your sysadmin at this point where it's time to take an action um, doesn't have to sit there and take each and every email and shoot it off to someone like MX Total and try to figure out if it's good or bad and not even really know. However, at this point, it's still at the gears in a manual process. You would have to do the normal, take a screenshot, send it out to everyone, tell them please delete it if you clicked on it, please change your password, contact the help desk, etc. But if you own all if you use Office 365, and G Suite's coming, I believe it's in a month or two. It's on the roadmap for this fall. You get Fish Rip, and you'll notice Fish Rip is in this blue box within the Fish ER box, meaning it's free. If you buy Fish ER for a couple, it's very cheap add on, you get Fish Rip. And now, instead of having to go through the usual, the sysadmin gets and says, Yep, I know it's bad because of all this data that came through in this automation. I click on about two clicks and it pulls it out of all my email boxes in my entire system. It can quarantine it, it can delete it, I can do advanced searches on header information and strings um, or different keywords or different domains because of course the, the bad guys don't make it easy, they randomize things on you. And in that scenario again, there's 150 people, if it's quick because it happened in the morning, maybe 140 of those people never even encountered that email. And you've just cut down on uh, exposure, people possibly clicking on things, and certainly uh, your human collateral on your help desk, thus the picture there on the bottom right of the gentleman looking having a much better day there at the service desk. So this one's a real game changer. Um, whenever I present this to clients, one of the first things they say is, wow, that's a game changer, and two, how fast can you get me a quote? So very interesting. So next steps, if this is something you're interested in, you can always contact us here at Candoris. If you have an account representative, you can reach out to them, or you can just go to candoris.com. You can certainly ping me. I'm not in sales, but I can point you in the right direction, um, and we can set something up for a demo to show you how that works. I'm sorry. I heard someone jump in there for a second. No, it's just me, Mike. Mark. Okay. And, of course, our website's candoris.com, where you can reach us. Um, I know we're up against it. If anyone has any questions or answers, uh, questions, I'm happy to provide the answers, hopefully. Uh, <clears throat> try to jump to your next session. I can certainly uh, handle things offline via email.